Okay, this is uh, the voiceover to the homework from section 6.3, non-standard normal. All right, so a non-standard normal is when your mean is not zero and your standard deviation is not one. All right, so your calculator is going to need four entries, a lower limit, an upper limit, a mean, and a standard deviation. Well, the mean and the standard deviation is always given to you. If you're going to mess it up somehow or make a careless mistake, you're Choosing the wrong, wrong lower limit or the wrong upper limit. So here again, I've been telling you right along, you need to draw the bell curve. Draw a vertical line to um, the X value on your horizontal line and figure out, am I going to the right or am I going to the left? If I'm going to the right all the way to negative infinity, sorry, if I'm going to my left all the way to negative infinity or to my right all the way to positive infinity. If you're going in between two values, then you'll know the smaller number, the lower limit, and you'll know the upper value. All right, so number one, mean is 60, standard deviation is 4. You got those two values. Probability of x being less than. Less than means you're going to your left. How far to the left? To negative infinity, which is denoted by negative E99. Your calculator puts the negative 1 in. Upper limit is where you're going to stop at 53. Now recall if you're using an 83. Or an 84 that uh, behaves like an 83. You go to second function bars, you come down to nominal, nominal cumulative density distribution function, DF. Um, it just prompts you, but you have to put the numbers in the correct order. The lower limit first, comma, upper limit second, uh, mean and standard deviation. So doing it with the calculator, you see the answer point zero four zero one, spot on. Some of these are going to be spot on, but you're going to find occasionally some that are have some discrepancy. Number two, mean is 15.2. There you see it. Standard deviation point nine. It's just plain as day. Now, what do we ask? We're asked for the probability that your x value is greater than 15.2. Well, greater means you're getting larger. You're going all the way out to positive infinity. So your lower limit is 15.2. You're going all the way to E99, positive infinity. And you uh, put in the calculator 0 0.500, but notice the mean is 15.2. You're asked to find the probability that x is greater than 15. Well, half the values to the, of the mean, the mean is right in the middle. Half of the uh, probability of the area is to the right, and half is to the left. 0 0.5 to the right, 0 0.5 to the left. There's one you could have asked about you putting into the calculator. Number three. Mean is 15.2, uh, standard deviation 0.9, you've got it, greater than 16.1. So 16.1 is your low bound. Greater than means you're going all the way out to positive infinity, E99. Hitting enter in your calculator, putting the values in, hitting enter, or paste. Um, spot on, 0.1587, not a big deal. Number five, mean is 22. You see it there, your standard deviation, 0.24, you see it there. Between, there's your low value and there's your upper value. Between these two, there's your lower bound, there's your upper bound. And notice a little discrepancy here. Your calculator gives you 0.7465. Could be number one because probabilities or areas can't be bigger than one. You know it's not letter A. And there's nothing even close to 0.47465. This is the closest. Now, if you wanted this exact answer, right? I don't know why you would. You would have to change that to a z-score. Take that, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation, change that to a z-score. Go to your table, find the area. Do the same thing. Calculate the z-score for 25.3. Take that value, subtract the mean, divide it by the standard deviation, making sure now that you would have to have your answer correct at four decimal places. Go to your table, take that area, subtract the area that this, this Z score gave you, whatever it came out to be, and it would be spot on. And here's a case, nothing even close. 0.7465 other than 0.7477. Here again, same problem, number six, same type of a problem. You're looking for the area between 13 point, I'm sorry, 134.4, there's your lower limit. And your upper limit is 140.1. You got your mean, you got your standard deviation. And once again, you know, 0 0.4088.
Nothing even close. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Probabilities can't be bigger than either one. These two answers aren't even close to theirs. Once again, if you couldn't live with that, I don't know why you change those both the z scores of probability and smaller area. It would have given you 0 0.4069, spot on. Number seven, we flipped the script. In one region, the September energy consumption levels for single family homes are found to be normally distributed. There's a mean, there's a standard deviation. Find P45. The value in the 45th percentile is bigger than 45% of all the other values. So the area to the left, the bottom, is 0.45. That's the area you're interested in because the z-score, or x-score in this case, that's associated with this value at the 45th percentile is to the left. What's to the left is the area 0.45, all right, the bottom, 0.45. So you're going to the inverse norm, second function of odds, inverse norm, put that area in, and pretty darn close, nothing really close to 100. And this is 122.6, uh, 102.2.6. Uh, this is 1,021.7. These values aren't even close. And once again, if you couldn't live with that, you'd have to have, you would have to go to your table, look up the in the body of the table, the area that's associated with uh, 0.45, nothing close. Number eight, same idea. You want the value that separates the bottom 81 from the top 19. Well, the value that we're looking for is the left-handed table. The area that's associated with the value we're looking for is to the left. What's to the left is the bottom portion, 81%, which is 0 0.81 as a decimal. All right, not the top box, it's the left-handed table to the left. Bottom is to the left, top is to the right. You don't want the right, you want the left. Notice this answer is spot on. Usually inverse norms are spot on, even though you have uh, non-standard normals. Okay, so number nine, um, a bank officer rates applicants for credit. We're looking for P60. P60 means your score was better than 60% of everybody else. So the area to the left of the value you're looking for is P60. The decimal, the 60th percentile is 0 0.60. All right, it's the lower to the left. There's your mean, there's your standard deviation, and you're off by about two tenths. That's what you calculate. Obviously, what you Answer she is giving you. Amount of rainfall in January, certain city normally distributed mean. There it is for three and deviation point three. Quartile one. Quartile one is 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 exactly P twenty five. Right? They're one and the same. Quartile one P twenty five one quarter. So the value that's associated with what we're looking for Q one is. Is found by the area to the left. Well, the area to the left is your bigger, your score, your rainfall, I'm sorry, here, was um, the 25th percentile. That's the value of the area to the left. There it is, 0.25 means deviation. These values, but here again, usually uh, inverse norms are spot on. One spot on. Looking for quartile three. If quartile one is P25, quartile three is P75. 75th percentile as a decimal is 0.75. That's the area to the left. Uh, if a woman height was in the 75th, sorry, quartile to be 75th percentile. She was taller than 75% of all the other women. The area to the left, 0.75. And you get 65.3 spot on, which is always nice. Um, English scores, scores on English test normally distributed is a mean, there's standard deviation. Find a score that separates the top 49, 59% from the bottom 41. Well, the area that's associated with the score you're looking for is to the left. It's the bottom area. The area to the left would be to the bottom of it and then you go to the top. Coincidentally enough, if you use the wrong percentage area, if you didn't use 0 0.41, you used 0.59. I think one of these answers, I'm not sure that it would have been the wrong answer, but you would have seen it here as a possible probable answer. 
And you said, oh, I got it right. No, you didn't because you used the wrong area. The area to the left, the bottom, 0.41, not 0.59, that's the top. 13, oh, dishwasher replacement times. You got the mean here, you got the standard deviation. Find the time that separates the top 18 from the bottom 82. That's what I'm looking for. The value that separates the uh, area to the left is the bottom portion, 82%. 0 0.82, there's your mean, there's your standard deviation. And you're only off by the answer. You're only off by one tenth. Nothing else really can be that close. Now we're looking for the temperature that separates the top 7% from the bottom. The bottom is the area to the left. That's what's associated with this temperature. All right, so there's your area you're looking for inverse norm. There's your mean, um, 98.20, and there's your standard deviation, 99.11, 99.12. You're off by 1100. Here's looking for two, looking for two scores. He wants the height that separates the top 3% from the bottom, and separating the bottom 3%. Well, bottom 3%, all right? So I use 3%.03, there's my mean, there's my standard deviation. I come up with uh, 8.33. I could have stopped right there because there was only one letter, letter, letter A, that had the correct first answer. <coughs> the value that separates the uh, bottom 3%. Now, what I did here, if you're looking for the area on the other side separating the top 3%, well, to the left would be 100 minus that 3 or 97%. But notice, I mean, 8.67, but I didn't have to do this. Once I had this answer, there was only one, letter A, that had 8.33. What's the sense of? I just did it just to show you, but um, once you saw that, we're done. All right, hope this helps.